Hey everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's video I painted a nice sunset um, lake scene and unfortunately um, it went a bit wrong and I never really came back to finish it. So this painting I reworked and I filmed it for all of you guys so I thought you might want to see um, just the changes I made on the painting and get to see a finished painting in action. So here we go. Now the reason I wanted to rework this painting is because the idea was really good, the composition is really good of a sunset lake, but unfortunately my um, the day I was painting it I just wasn't feeling it, I wasn't in the mood. And sometimes your painting comes out whack. It doesn't come out as good as you want. It just comes out bad. And things like the tree, I just wasn't putting much effort into it. And it just looks really, really scruffy. But today I've got my game face on and I really want to rework it. Because the idea is really good and the composition, as I say, is really nice. So let's get down to business. So things like a sunset, you want to get brighter around the sun and get darker as it cools off into the distance. So you want to go from things like yellows into oranges, into warm pinks into cooler blues and purples and things like nearer the sun you're going to have the most heat and things that are the furthest away and the corners we want to have very dark because we want the people the viewer eyes to go straight down the middle of our piece and we want to draw you into the artwork and we want to have these things like the trees and the corners and the stones where the water's hitting the surface at the bottom of the painting to draw you in and look realistic so the first thing we want to do in painting the sunset is to have the sun itself really 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 bright and in the center of our piece because that's where we want the viewers eyes to go straight down the middle so all I'm doing is I'm using a bit of Naples yellow which is just basically yellow and white and the reason I want to create a really really bright area around my Sun is because what that does is by having a really bright area it makes the surrounding tree line stand out more if the sky is quite dark and the tree line is quite dark it won't stand out so by just having this sort of juxtaposition of darks and lights what it does is it creates distance in your work but also it creates the illusion of detail by having things in the background and the foreground it just gives your work a more 3d approach and a more um, realistic approach when creating artwork now with working with acrylic paints Sometimes, as in my previous tutorials I've showed you, you have to go over them and just blend. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. I keep trying to say to people, doing a half an hour tutorial is not necessarily how you're gonna have a world-class painting. So sometimes you just gotta revisit your work and when you're really in the zone and you're really relaxed and you really, really want to work, just sort of go over things and soften edges and try to get your transitions and your blending better. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this Naples yellow and I'm just working it into the already underneath painting which is the orange and I'm just highlighting bits of mist I'm just going over any bits that look scruffy and just with a dry brush and barely any paint I'm just smoothing it out so I just want to get really really good texture now when you jump from yellow to orange it's a bit of a harsh transition it's too harsh on a viewers eyes look yellow to orange is just too much so what we want to do is we want to make a bridge color which is a color in between so we're going to mix yellow and orange together and what that does is if you think of the clouds we want to have nice soft transitions if you ever see nature in action she has unbelievable transitions you never notice where one color is blurring into the next color it's just absolutely seamless so we as artists we want to try to recreate that so what we're doing is we're creating tones that are a mixture of the both and what that's going to do is going to trick the viewers eyes into looking like a real sunset so by mixing orange and yellow together to create this really nice bright sort of it's not gold but it's like a golden yellow a very warm yellow we've got a lovely bridge tone which really really tricks your eye and it makes the transition from the yellow into the orange just look much more nice and much more natural 
And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to mirror the sky and the water. So if there's a transition in the sky, we're going to try to transition with the exact same tones in the water. So first off, we're just going to transition these colors. And as I say, look, if you have to do two coats, you have to do two coats. With acrylics, the acrylic paints dry really flat sometimes. And sometimes you just got to dry with a hair dryer and just go over the top to make it look bright, to make it look as nice as you can. So sometimes it is worth repainting anyway, just to make your work look more brighter. So look, we're gonna do exactly a mirror from what we had above us. So think of a mirror effect. We're just gonna use that same lovely sort of golden yellow tone, not quite orange, a bit more yellow than orange. And we're just going to bridge these tones together just so the transitions look seamless. They look a lot more natural. And then we're going to add orange to that mix. So again, we're just going to add some orange to that mix and just make it more orangey. And again, just to make these transitions look more natural. Sometimes with certain colors, things like orange, they're a bit overbearing. So you, you don't want it too bright, you want it more natural but we still want to have this really, really sort of bright, wonderful sunset, which is all these multi colors, because that is the sort of core piece of our, of our artwork. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just blending the tone, just adding a tiny bit of water, and that's just to soften the edges and just to soften the transitions. So again, it's just reworking things. As I say, as you get better as an artist, you will learn, to come back to your work. Sometimes you can't polish a turd. <laughs> Sometimes you will have paintings. I had one the other day that I put my fist through because <laughs> it just went terrible. You are gonna have days like that, but a lot of the times if you believe in yourself and you are more confident, revisit your artwork and go over it and turn those um, bits and bobs that you really didn't like into much better masterpieces that you can sell. So if you rework things, you can always set it at a later date. And you can always use that for photos, for prints, for merchandise. So it's always in your best interest as an artist to revisit your work. Don't give up on yourself and try to get more from your artwork. Because if you think of it like a professional, if you think of it as a pro, each painting you can technically sell. So you want to rework it, you want to come back to it, you want to be the best you can be. So you can make money from your artwork. So look, just by using that orange, we're just creating the illusion of waves. And because we've got that nice underpainting, that nice yellowy gold tone, that allows these oranges to stand through. So now again, we're gonna do another bridge from orange to pink. So we're gonna mix the two together. So just the same technique, it's really, really easy. So whatever color you're gonna to go to next, you just mix the previous color into. So if we were going from pink to purple, guess what, you you merge pink and purple. So this orange and pink is just a nice transition into the next bit. So again, it's just really simple. All my videos I'm hopefully are just so common sense. It's just show you the actual workings as an artist, the actual, everyday life of it is not that hard as I keep trying to say to you it's just knowing the tricks knowing the things learning these techniques and hopefully you're taking all this information away and you're applying it to your own artwork it's really really great of you all the people who are doing um, versions of my tutorials here on YouTube please 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 keep um, tagging me and DMing me on my Instagram, which is at Paintings, because what I like to do is share all your artwork and give you a shout out to hopefully increase your confidence and increase your, um, your art following on things like Instagram. So by sharing it on my Hall of Fame section on my Instagram, I love to um, give a big shout out to the artists who try to work my paintings. So again, look, we're just cooling it down now. We're just gonna use some purple. And again, it's just trying to mimic the colors that we had down previously, but we're trying to make them better. Now I like to use this really lovely purple tone. I use a, a credit company called PBO. And all I'm doing is I'm putting a purple and pink tone together, like I just said, and we're just gonna create a bridge for that. Now the reason I like to use that um, purple is I haven't come across it m much. It's a mixture between purple, white, and blue, but it's already pre-mixed, so I love it. 
but it's a really, really nice tone for clouds. It's a great transition. Um, so purple, white, and blue is how you make that big dollop of purple that I've got on my on my palette. And all we're doing is adding some of that warm pink to the mix, that very bright pink, just to have again another bridge tone, just so the transitions aren't so harsh on your eyes. Now I'm just going to take some of the warm pink and I'm going to just highlight just sort of the underneath of some of these darker clouds. Now the reason I'm doing the underneath of the clouds is if you think of having a light bulb underneath your hand, well that's where all the light and the highlights are going to be. So think of the sun, the sun is below the clouds, so the sun is shining upwards onto these clouds and hitting the sort of belly of the clouds and kind of making the clouds look lighter. So again, for the whole point of tricking the viewer's eyes, we want to just sort of bridge the colours in tones and we're going to use some of that warm pink. And all we're going to do is just go over the bottom bit and just blend it into that lovely bluey purple. And what that does, look, it just sort of tricks your eye and it just makes the gradient of colour, the gradient of the lights and the darks, sort of fade off into the distance. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just going over the bottom bit of our clouds and just giving them a highlight and just sort of blending them into one another. So this area is going to be the darkest and just like always, just like the great magician Bob Ross used to always say, he says darken up your corners. Now the reason you darken up your corners is because we want to draw the viewer's eyes into the center. And by darkening up the corners, what that does is it makes you focus in the middle of the painting. So things like the tree, things like the um, shoreline with the dark, and obviously with this clouded area, we really want to have this as the darkest part of our painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to first put some of that bluey purple on first. So we're going to darken this area up. And what that is going to do is, as I say, is just get you to focus. So I'm just using a bit of Prussian blue, but you can just add blue and black. And again, we don't want to make it too dark. We don't want to make it too strong. So we, I'm just adding a little bit of water because we want to just use my lovely finger <laughs> to mix it because we want to keep it blended. We don't want it too strong. And all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of red or a little bit of crimson to that mix. Just the, the very dark blue, the blue and black, which is Prussian blue. And I'm just going to make it a bit more purpley. And I'm just going to highlight the far edges of those clouds because they're going to get no light they're going to be in the dark because obviously the light source has come from underneath them and again it's just making it look a bit more 3d but what it's doing as i say the great bob ross my hero would say is darken up corners because what it does is it really does focus the viewer's eyes down the center of our painting which we want and especially if you actually get the painting framed or you did prints of it and it had a nice white border what it does is it really does frame the painting by darkening up your corners another pro tip from us artists for you guys is a really good way to have your viewer look straight down your work and get lost into your artwork so just mix in the colours, take your time and say just put some not as harsh, maybe add a little bit of pink to that mix just to make it look a bit lighter and then just going up. And obviously we're going to paint the leaves back over in a black tone later, but it's just so we've got the clouds finished. Now because our sky is pretty much dry, all I'm doing is just taking some of that Naples yellow that we used earlier and I'm just making it a bit more prominent and a bit of a divide between our clouds. So all I'm doing is I'm just using the Naples yellow just to make my sky a bit brighter. We're going to rework it at the end, but I'm just going to use a bit of Naples yellow now. Because with acrylic paints, as I say, sometimes you just have to give it another layer just to make it look brighter. So I'm just working where I've missed a spot. I'm just filling it in. As I say, it's just, it's just trying to put a nice clean colour between the background and those tree lines. Um, because in a minute when we do the tree line and we make them look more prominent, we want to make them look brighter. We're just going to make them go over them again and just make them a clear definition between what is the trees and what is the sky. So I'm just using some of that bridge tone just to create colours, just to 
a little sort of float of clouds just between the sky. And I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to mix it into the maple yellow, just a bit brighter. Just because sometimes with the sun, what you do is you have this sort of really bright yellow sort of tinge that goes around it, and then it sort of fades out into sort of maple yellow. So I'm just using that yellow just to make the sky look a bit brighter. Almost colouring it in, like a colouring in book. I'm just going over the top. Very little paint on my brush. I'm just going over the top, just making it look a bit brighter. Sometimes I go back and forth, sometimes I rework things. I add a colour, see if it looks better, just have a step from afar, and if it looks worse, paint over it. So sometimes in these videos you can see me going back and forth and it's just trying to work out things, see if it's too dark or too light. So again, just adding some Naples yellow just around those tree lines, just to make it stand out a bit more, just to again, just have the transition less harsh on your eye. If you have just bright yellow and not a mix between the tones, it's just a bit overwhelming. So again, that all comes with experience, learning your tones, learning things like a color wheel. If any of you have got a color wheel, or you can just download one on Google, just have a color wheel and just see what tone comes next and how they fade into each other. So what I'm doing is just going around the sun with this brighter yellow color, just to make it look like it's sort of wafting into the air and the light is sort of refracting on the air. And I'm just using pale white, titanium white, jet white, whatever you want to call it, just in my sun, just to make it look super bright, coming over, coming over those far off trees in the background on our lake. Now on the lake water, what we're gonna do is just mirror it, as I say. So if I add anything above in the sky, I'm just gonna add the same tone to the water. So if I add a brighter yellow in the sky, guess what, I'm gonna mirror it in the water. And again, just leave little gaps, and what that does, it creates the illusion of waves by just using a flat brush and just using sort of lines in your work. So as I say, sometimes with painting, it's going back and forth. It's, it's just taking your time. It, some of my um, really detailed work that people see on Instagram and it looks photorealistic is just literally having the patience to go back and forth and back and forth and to get everything super blended and super precise and just taking your time. As I keep saying to you in all the tutorial videos and all the um, art tip videos, it's your art at the end of the day, it's your work. So be happy with it. So look, all I'm doing is I'm taking a really warm orange and I'm putting that on the tree line beneath the sun and I'm just going over the top and it's, why am I putting the really warm orange around this tree line? Well, cause the light is so bright of the sun, what it does is it reflects onto the tree line. So all I'm doing, look, I'm reflecting it onto the water. I'm just matching the tone on the water. So I think what we're doing already. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more orange to that mix. You could use a color which is called Burnt Sienna, which is um, the color I paint all my um, canvases in. If anyone watches my painting tutorials, I always paint the canvas a really orangey brown. And that is this tone. And all I'm doing, I've got a little bit of water on my brush. I'm just blending that tone into the um, tree line and into the orange that we just put down. And what that does is it makes it look really really warm and it makes it look like the sun the sunlight and all the heat from that super powerful sun is hitting onto our trees and because we want the reflection in the water we're just applying the exact same color so look we're just mirroring it and already it's starting to give a really lovely effect and it's so easy to do it's just mirroring the colors so just think of a mirror look at that absolutely gorgeous it's really really easy it's just trying to create a mirror effect of the tree lines onto the water so just try to give the tops and just try to add all the sort of bits and bumps now what we're going to do is this nearer left hand side of uh, bushes and sort of a little bit of the island that's going to be catching the light because obviously it's got the light hitting that side so we're just using the exact same color and all we're going to do is just touch that up in that corner. And I'm just going to add some heat 
around this corner here because even though this is far off and we're going to make it um, at the end very dark what it does is it just gives a little hint of that heat so when we add some shadows over the top it's got a little bit of that color in the background and what that does is it just emphasizes it and just looks like it's getting a bit of sunlight now all i've done here is just added some black and some blue to the mix so i've got a really really dark blue so almost black but not quite black it's a very very dark blue and what that's doing is i'm just again blending it into the burnt sienna and the orange and again i'm just trying to create the illusion of bushes and sort of trees and foliage on the riverbank and by using that really dark blue it's not quite black so it's not bringing it really really close to us like the other side of the background but it's still pushing the um, island further back away from the viewer because if you add black what it does is it brings something forward so we're going to add really dark blue um, to our mix because we don't want to bring it too close to us we still want it to be just off into the distance and again we're going to mirror the exact same tones with the um, the water and we're just going to try to mirror the shape of the um, bushes and the trees into the water to create the illusion of a reflection so again all I'm doing is just thinking whatever is above me I'm just trying to put below me I'm just trying to put the same same technique as a reflection so same color everything so even look the burnt sienna and the orange we're going to try to mirror onto the riverbank just to create the illusion of water now with water you get sort of these sort of pockets of um shadow so you, what we're doing is we're just creating little splodges little dots and they're sort of the ripples in the water that create the um, sort of shadow of the same tone. So there we go, just added these little shadow effects. That's nice, all blocked in. And while I had the burnt sienna and the orange, I was just creating sort of foliage just to see what that would look like. Even though I'm going to cover it up most of it, I am going to leave a little hint of it underneath. So sometimes I just put down a colour. Because the thing is with the sunlight, sometimes you have things like um, twigs and leaves and little bits and bobs on the riverbank. And when we darken it up later, you're still going to get a hint of that. And it's still going to create like an outline. And what that does, again, just when you take a step back or two from your artwork, it just gives it that... A, Again, that extra bit of realism and just makes it trick your eyes and just makes it look a bit more realistic and also the tones because the tones are so um, realistic it just again just makes it work now I'm not very happy with my riverbank I'm not really happy with the stones and sort of the pebbles where the water sort of runs into the shore it's a really nice sunset i'm really happy with the sunset and i'm really happy with the color but i'm not really happy with the water it hasn't got enough ripples for me so i decided to completely rework it so what i'm trying to do just like before i'm trying to mirror the sky onto the water but the thing with water it's got waves in it it's got it's got ripples so what i tend to do is i try to put the colors down that are in the sky. So I try to mirror the light blue, which was just light white, a little bit of Carillion blue and a little bit of cobalt blue to create this really nice sort of lighter blue, which is the same blue. If you go about halfway up the painting, it's the same bit of the sky as where the orange and the pink is. And obviously I use a darker tone blue as it gets darker, which is this blue which is just a hint darker it's just got a little bit more blue in it tiny dash of purple and what that does is just a bit cooler because obviously it's getting shadier or further away from the sun it's going to be darker so look it's the same color as this top bit of my painting so again i'm just using a dry brush hardly any paint i'm just trying to smoothen edges just try to put back where i've messed up that tree that tree was awful. <laughs> it doesn't even look like a tree. God. 
I was definitely not in the zone that day. I was definitely not feeling it when I originally painted this. And look, just add a little bit more white to that tone. And because the sky, I've always taught people the sky is lighter towards the horizon. So by adding, by getting a bit darker and just adding a bit more blue to the mix as you go up, it will just trick your eye again and just make it look more realistic. Just make it look brighter. So all I'm doing, I'm just reworking the gaps in the clouds just to make them look brighter. So just by adding little gaps with the same colour, what we're doing, we're just trying to make the clouds look a bit more realistic. And just where you've got sometimes the two tones mix, it just gets a bit smudgy. So by reworking it, just makes it look more brighter. Now all I've done is I've added a little bit more blue and a little more purple to my sky color, just to make it a much darker tone. Now the reason I am darkening up the area, I'm really not happy with the water, and I'm really not happy with the lack of ripples and the lack of texture. So what I'm doing, if you watch my tutorials, I always put a shadow color down first. Now the reason I put a shadow color down first is it allows me to put highlights over the top. Because if you have a dark background and then you put some bright highlights over the top, they really stand out. And I want things like waves and ripples to add texture to my water. So all I'm doing, I'm trying to create the illusion of waves. I'm just painting in areas which I want to be dark just so in a minute I can add some real bright highlights, the same colors that we use for the clouds over the top. And what they'll do, it'll give the sort of sh water that sheen effect. So look, by adding the dark tones first, all I'm doing is creating little blobs and shapes. Now, all I do is I create sort of zigzags with the, um, the tones. So first I'm gonna do the pink. So I'm gonna put the pink in the middle because I'm just trying to leave gaps and I'm trying to create these sort of zigzag shapes. If you ever see water when it ripples, it creates sort of these little sort of blobby sort of zigzags and Z sort of shapes. And what that's doing is just trying to create the illusion of ripples in the water and the light sort of reflecting onto the water tops and the caps of the water. So by adding the dark tone, what it does is it really emphasizes the highlight. So there's a great song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers called Dark Necessities. And it's basically saying that you need the dark things to know what is the good things. So if you didn't know what you didn't like, how would you know what you did like? So by adding a bit more heat to the um, bright pink, I've added a little bit of orange. And what that's going to do is, again, it's just going to be like a bridge tone to make the ripples just look a bit more realistic and just blend in with the lighter orange because I want the um, transition between the lighter orange that's in the middle and the dark orange to be really really nice so all I'm doing is just trying to mix colors sometimes as I say when I go away it's just me just taking a step back from the painting just so I can have a look at it just so I can see what I need to do and what I don't need to do so which areas I need to darken up and which areas I need to change. Now on the right hand side, it's a bit messy. So what I'm trying to do is just trying to neaten it up and try to um, have the transition, just like the sky, where it's not as noticeable, that it almost is seamless. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some of the orange tone and I'm going to just paint in the right hand side, just above this bush with a darker orange tone. Just heat it up, just make it warmer, because I want the transition for the water to look seamless. So I want it to look more natural and just sort of blend into the pinks and then blend into the blues, just so it looks like it's getting cooler as it gets towards the viewer. So by just adding that orange heat, you can just see quite clearly now it's starting to look much more realistic. Now, if we take some bright pink and we create the zigzag shapes what that should do is create the ripple effects on the water so again it's just adding more texture just by doing layers by putting the darker tones on first and then just adding lighter tones and just building it up what we're trying to do is just mirror the sort of colors that are above 
in the clouds onto the water and create the illusion of ripples and highlights on our water. So I'm getting some of the shadow color again. And I'm just going in and around here because this is going to be the right where it hits the bank of the river and the sort of sunlight isn't getting to this area it's getting, it's getting a lot cooler a lot darker so we're just trying to cool it down so as i keep saying to you blues and purples are excellent for cools orange and pinks and yellows are excellent for warm and heat so if you want to brighten areas up just add yellow orange and reds and pinks and if you want to cool or darken things down just add blues and purples so just the same as adding pinks on top of the dark tones you can add lighter blues on top of the darker blues and purples so all i'm doing is i'm taking some of that corner sky color and i'm just creating the zigzags again so look just zigzags just trying to create ripples and it's the dark tone underneath that allows the ripples to stand out with the highlights so where the water will hit the shore they'll obviously create more ripples and i'm going to put some pebbles back in on that area so that's going to create a distortion in the water so all i'm doing is i'm taking the lighter blue which is just blue a tiny bit of purple and a bit of white and i'm just creating ripples just as the water is hitting the lovely lakes bank which is hitting the, um, the bank of the river so again it's just putting on extra texture but if you don't have the darks on first it, it won't stand out you won't have your highlights looking so pretty so you do need these darker tones it's just a mixture just think of yin and yang you need one and you need the other Everything has its opposites. So by putting the dark tones on first, it just makes your life so much easier because you can just put the highlights over the top. And just by using tones to create the image of detail, it just saves you a lot of work, just saves you a lot of trouble. And it tricks your eyes, so it's making it already look realistic, yay! Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some jet black and I'm going to basically create the illusion of pebbles and try to make my riverbank just look a bit more pleasing to the eye because I really want to create a scene that draws the viewer in and I'm happy with my sunset, I'm really happy with my reflection, I'm really happy with the lake so I just want to work on it and make it more realistic and I want to darken up areas because obviously that's going to be almost like a silhouette where you're not getting hardly any sunlight and that's going to create this silhouette illusion so all I'm doing is I'm just creating sort of stones and trying to create a sort of river bank and a lake bank but because we've got little bits of that burnt sienna sort of the hints from before again it's just it's just creeping in there it's creating the illusion of warmth and what we're doing as well by using the darker black is we're trying to frame our painting to again darken up the corners to again draw the viewer's eyes straight down the middle to our lovely sunset which is the whole purpose yay so by just adding a little bit of black on that edge just to frame it just to draw again the viewer's eyes into the middle and just darkening up that very last bit just making it look a bit more tree-like just adding a bit more texture to it a bit more leaves So by just adding just little hints of branches and little bits and bobs, it's just always doing again, it's just tricking your eyes, just making it look like there's more texture. And the same on the reflection, because I've added a little bit of darker tone, I'm just matching it up on the reflection below it. So again, whatever you do in the sky, just do the same in the water. It's, good, it's a good little technique to remember. So just think whatever you did on the sky, just mirror it onto the water and you can't go wrong because then your painting will match so look all matching now because that black is a bit overwhelming we want to create the illusion of the water sort of hitting the riverbank so what i'm doing i'm just using the same color blue the lighter blue 
and I want to create sort of the zigzags. I'm using a flat brush and I'm just creating lines and zigzags into that shadow. And what that's going to do is going to create the illusion of water cascading into the shadow. So can you see how that works? If anyone ever goes to a park and just sees the water and sees the uh, trees reflecting into it, it kind of has the sky color and the shadow color mixed. So by just mixing the two tones, so by mixing the shadow color and the sky color into these little zigzags, if my chubby hand gets out of the way, look, you're creating the illusion of a more 3D look to make it look again more realistic and to have more texture so by just creating these zigzags with the um, sky color we're just trying to create the illusion of the waves so all i'm doing is to say i'm just going over the top just reworking it till i'm happy with it so now by making the lighter sky color so the lighter blue what we're going to do is we're just going to just put where the sunlight is going straight down the middle where that sun um, is reflecting onto the water and it's kind of shining straight down the middle or well, i'm just going to lighten up this area but with the lighter blue just so it makes it look like it's catching the light source and going around our pebbles so just by just adding a little bit of lighter blue it's just mirroring again the sunlight. So again, just try and create zigzags. We've got the darker zigzags, and now we're just adding the lighter zigzags. And it's just the mixture between the texture, just by putting the foundation of the underpainting and then just working on top of it by just adding highlights, keep going and just working on top of it. We're just gradually getting there. So again, just like where we lined up the sky, just where we've got the um, tree line in the far distance, the reason we're going to lighten up a little bit around our pebbles and such is to make our pebbles stand out because we want them just like the far off tree line with the sun to have a clear divide between the sky and the trees. Well, we want a clear divide between the pebbles and the bank. So what we're doing is we're just using that brighter tone again just to emphasize sort of like the froth of the water coming into the shore of our lake right so i'm just going to put some highlights of brighter orange on just that area that was darker so just on the right hand side where we put the darker orange i'm just going to put some lighter orange so again what do we mix it with just yellow and orange together and all i'm doing is again just like the white in the middle if you think that sunlight is beaming down, that heat, all I'm doing is just trying to create gaps and create um, sort of little cascades of that heat colour. Just sort of hitting the caps of, of the ripples, and just coming towards the lake bank, the river bank, just by creating this nice tone. So again, I'm just matching it and just coming towards the viewer. So where we've got the blue and we've got the pink, it really, really stands out against it. And all it does is it just draws your eye again down the middle. So look, just going towards the shore. Wow, it's starting to look so pretty. And I'm just taking some really, really bright white and I'm just going over my sun just to make her look so much brighter. Look at that fantastic. And the same here on the water. Just mirroring it, just brighten it up, just so it pops, makes it look much better. Just blending it into the canvas. So now I really want to just finish her off, so I really want to darken the corners, as I say, to draw the viewer's eyes to the middle. So we're going to just finish this bush, which is in black, and I'm just going to leave the hint of that burnt sienna with the um, outline, because that's going to be hitting the sunlight. 
and we're going to paint in our tree because our tree looks terrible. So all we're going to do is get some black and I'm just getting a small brush and I'm just creating the illusion of leaves. You can use a sponge. I think I used a sponge originally for the tree. Now, if you use a sponge, just make sure you get pick up lots of paint. Make sure your um, painting is dry. And then make sure you have a pack of baby wipes because just like now, if I make a mistake, worst comes to worst, the dry painting, because it's acrylics, the painting is dry. You could always just literally get out a pack of baby wipes and just wipe away the black. So if you ever make a mistake, you can always just wipe it off. So always make sure your painting is dry before you do anything like a tree or leaves because if it's not and you paint over the top and you make a mistake, unfortunately you won't be able to correct it. So by just ensuring that it's already dry and just having a pack of baby wipes handy, you can just always just correct things. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating the illusion of leaves just using the jet black tone. And again, what that's gonna do, it's gonna bring that tree really forward. So it's almost like it's standing, hovering over the riverbank and we're looking out into the sunset. So we're looking out into the distance could be someone who's been fishing in Montana or someone like that. <laughs> so with leaves, the secret is, is less is more. So just take a small brush and just create shapes, little shapes, but always make sure you leave gaps because if you don't leave gaps, it will look really blobby and not look like leaves. So the secret is, is just to leave little marks on your canvas little marks look just put them randomly and the edge of leaves the edge of branches so to speak it's always got not as much leaves at the end so look where i'm getting to the edge of where i'm going to put a branch i'm only putting a few leaves where in the middle of things is where you have the clumps so if you try to just sort of leave as much gaps as you possibly can what it will do it will make the painting look more realistic so as i say you can use a sponge a sponge a very um sort of rustic sort of um sort of hard textures sponge is very very good for things like leaves and bushes anything like that it's really really good for adding texture but we're just going to do it with our paintbrush today now I have some painting tutorials on um, how to paint forests and how to paint uh, trees. And what I would suggest you do is if you ever are struggling, is just whip over to them. They're on my playlist in the playlists of landscapes and they're in all my painting tutorials and swap to a fine liner. And the reason I'm saying, suggesting you might want to watch them is you always, when you're painting branches, if you watch carefully now, you always have the end of the branch, the finished, and they get thicker as they get towards the beginning of the branch. So look, watch, it's really thin. And as it gets into the branch, it gets thicker. And that's so it looks more realistic. So again, watch if you have it nice and thin by using a really fine liner. And you can always add some more leaves if you make a mistake like me. <laughs> That's another pro tip. But watch, if you just go really thin and as you get to the end of the branch, you go thicker. So there you go. Because a tree is always thicker at the beginning of the branch and it's always thicker at the trunk than it is at the top. So if you learn like that, it's really, really easy to paint realistic trees. But that looks fab. So I'm really happy with my tree. I'm really happy with the improvements with the branches and the leaves. It looks 10 times better. I'm really happy with this shore, with the um, pebbles and the uh, composition. So what I wanna do, I wanna put the very finishing touches on my painting to give it that wow factor. So I just wanna put the very last fine detail on it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting some um, white and blue which is all just the froth of the water as it hits onto the um, lake bank or the river bank. So as the water hits those pebbles and sort of comes up against the shore, it just creates a bit of froth and a bit of um, sort of uh, 
foam as it hits the um, shore. So all we're doing just by using a very light tone is we're just trying to create some highlights so it looks more realistic just here onto the river bank. And again, all about being an artist is putting your own stamp on something and just getting it to a very high standard. So I am renowned for my clouds. I'm renowned for sunsets. So I am going to put some highlights just on the um, underbelly of these clouds using some white and some yellow because I really, really want people to be lost into this painting. I really want them to focus off the middle part and just sort of be... Um, lost in the scene so to speak so i really want you focusing down the middle so i'm just going to really highlight this area and make it more a traditional murray painting which is a fantastic sunset so all i'm doing is i'm just using some yellow and white and just emphasizing the real sharpness these real highlights on these clouds because about being a good artist is having the ability to see something in your imagination and keep going till the very final moment to you're happy enough with it and you've made it into a reality so just by going over things and highlighting them taking your time knowing in yourself and being confident in yourself that you are good and that you have a very high standard so you keep going until you get to that standard and as i say you'll make mistakes all along the way everyone does but you can always revisit these paintings and come back to them with the lessons you learn from these tutorials and from other really great artists here on YouTube and just keep going and keep learning and keep learning and then just applying what you've learned to your own work and just keep coming back and keep working on it. Keep trusting your ability to see something in your imagination and just keep going until you can actually do it. So again, just like always, sometimes have to go over the top to get that brightness effect so sometimes you've got to do an extra layer you can just dry it with a hairdryer and you can just literally go over the top with these highlights with these super bright highlights that we want it is a must that you have to do multiple layers because we want those highlights to really really pop so by just going over the same top with acrylics sometimes they dry really flat so we're going to have to sometimes just go over the top with the same color. And all it does is, as I say, it's the same with the sun, just going around it with that really bright. It just makes it pop. It just makes it look so much more brighter, so much more realistic. And it does give your work that wow factor. That, that wow, look at that. It looks so real. So by just going over the top and taking your time, that is quite common with acrylics. That's nothing to be afraid of. Don't worry about it. Take your time, enjoy yourself. Trust in your ability. Trust that it will come good at the end. Now, the other thing to remember is your work is your work. Now, I don't want my work looking like anyone else. I want it to be unique to mine and original. And one of the things I'm known for is not only sunsets, but it's my wonderful technique of sunbeams that I always do on my paintings. I love to do them and it's a really easy effect. So make sure your canvas is dry and make sure your painting is dry. Take some of the light yellow and white. Use a flat brush, rub most of the paint off on your skanky clothes like mine. And then all you do, look, you just create sunbeams by just pushing down really, really gently and just going in a straight line. Because you've got a flat brush, the brush will do most of the work because it is flat and straight. You can just create a straight line. And all I'm doing is I'm taking very hardly any paint, a dry brush, my canvas is totally dry and I'm just creating the illusion of sunbeams coming out of my lovely, beautiful sun. Now, if you are not very confident and you are not very um, keen to do this, you're not very, um, you find it quite hard, what you can do is you can dry your painting, have a pack of baby whites next to you and use something like a flat edge. So use the edge of an envelope or a book and you can just go up with the edge and do it that way. 
rather than do it freehand. But if your painting is dry, just like when we did the tree, and if you make a mistake, you can always just use the baby wipes and just wipe away the paint that you've just put on the top. So look, it's just a really subtle effect. We've got hardly any paint, but what it's doing, again, just like the highlights, just like the shawl, just like the leaves, it's all these little bits and bobs that make the painting. So. As I say to you, by just adding all these little highlights on top, all these little added detail, they are the things that make your painting absolutely perfect. So that looks great already. It's just subtle. It's just very, very subtle. It's just hardly any paint. It's just the color of those highlights. And I'm just using the same brush with hardly any paint just to soften up the area and just make it look further back and look more realistic such a lovely effect such a lovely easy technique and it looks so pretty on your artwork so as i say use these techniques on your artwork please 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 experiment try it out for yourself learn and get confident in your own ability try to apply it to scenes that you see in real life and practice and sketch but i think it looks pretty damn good compared to how it was so i think we should take a photo and compare it so this is the before and look how fantastic she looks now super bright super electric everything looks absolutely much more professional and much more it has that wow factor and it didn't take us long just about an hour just to rework she looks absolutely fab as i say it's believing in yourself believing you can do it always try to improve your work always try to improve your situation by getting your head down and just seeing what you can do so i hope you've really really liked it please like and subscribe to this channel because it gets it shown to much more artists i have plenty of painting tutorials and plenty more art video tips and videos to come i'm going to do one on varnishing and oil paints next so thank you very much for watching it with me please like and subscribe and yeah take care guys see you soon bye